Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to Fight for Truth, the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Kenneth Copeland. Now, recently we made a video about how and why Kenneth Copeland talks to his hair. You can watch that video using the link in the description, but in this video, we'll be watching some different clips of Kenneth telling us why, despite being over 85 years old, he's still in the perfect picture of health. Or at least he likes to think so. This, like most of his teaching, is a huge bundle of contradictions and incredible claims made without compelling evidence. So without further ado, let's review Kenneth's advice on how to stay healthy and compare it to Scripture. Watch this. And as I told you, I have a large closet, walk-in closet, and I still had my pajamas and my robe on. And I was back there in that closet, and I'm going like this, I'm 80 years old, Woo I'm 80 years old. And the word of the Lord came on me and I just stopped right where I was. And he rose up on the inside of me and he said, you listen to me, 80 is your new 30 and you're starting over again. So here is the story thus far. Kenneth Copeland was in his pajamas dancing around saying, I'm 80 years old over and over again. And then all of a sudden, God himself spoke directly to Kenneth and said this, quote, you listen to me, 80 is your new 30 and you're starting over, end quote. If it sounds like I'm being sarcastic or facetious, I assure you I'm not. All I did was repeat what Kenneth Copeland actually said. The story is just so bizarre, so out there, that it sounds like something a discernment YouTube channel would make up in order to get views. But that's not the case, you just saw it on video. This is actually the story Kenneth Copeland told using the actual details that he included in it. But here's the deal, folks. What Kenneth is saying is unique. Most of the time, people in the Word of Faith movement make only vague promises. Favor and blessing are coming your way, and everything is going to turn out just fine. Rarely do they ever offer a prophecy or word from God that can actually be compared to reality. But here Kenneth Copeland is giving us a statement that we can actually test. Again, it's very rare. And with that in mind, let's look at the next clip, which happens just a bit later in the sermon. This is where things get really interesting. Watch this. And he's kind of wide eyed. Well, I had him on a trainer and checked my metabolic age, the age my body thinks it is. <laughs> on your diet, amount of exercise, and, and all that. My body thinks it's between 35 and 37 years old. <laughs> Now, <laughs> that just amazes me. So apparently, after being tested by doctors, it is confirmed that Kenneth Copeland, at the ripe old age of 85, is as fit and healthy internally as a 35 to 37 year old. His, quote, diet and amount of exercise are like that of a 35 year old's body. He says this as if it's scientific evidence that God's promise of 80 is your new 30 must be true. Here again, we have a claim that can actually be tested. This would be absolutely amazing if it is indeed true, very miraculous. But what he says next is truly incredible. Watch this. And I got short of breath over in a prison and for Mike Barber, never did have any pain. I, I could kind of feel that my heart rate was up high. So I got checked and they said, well, you need a pacemaker. And I said, well, Lord, I'll just get that pacemaker by faith. He said, no, and he used an aviation term with me. He said, you're too far behind the power curve. He said, take the pacemaker by faith. Now pause, wait just a minute here. This is notable for several reasons. Apparently Kenneth's heart was having some trouble and he needed what's called a pacemaker. For those of you who don't know, a pacemaker is a small device implanted in one's chest which regulates their heartbeat. And he said, quote, I'll take the pacemaker by faith. But this doesn't quite work. I thought that in the Word of Faith movement, you were actually supposed to claim health by faith. Why would you claim a pacemaker by faith when you could simply claim a fully healthy heart by faith? Thus, you would eliminate the need for a pacemaker. 
Try though he may, this idea simply does not fit with the rest of Kenneth Copeland's worldview. In fact, there seems to be a pretty huge contradiction here. And this brings us to another issue. Kenneth just said a few seconds ago that his body has the diet and exercise of a healthy 35-year-old. But here's an important question. How many perfectly healthy 35-year-olds do you know that need a pacemaker for their heart? I would wager that the answer is somewhere near zero. Curious about this, I did some research regarding the average age for someone who needs a pacemaker. According to an article from Reuters, quote, among those given dual chamber pacemakers, which account for 82% of all pacemakers, the most common type used in the United States, the average age rose from 73 to 75 years, end quote. Here's another startling statistic, this time from WebMD. Quote, of the pacemakers installed yearly, 84% are for people older than the age of 65. Only 6% are for those younger than 49, end quote. In other words, an 85-year-old is orders of magnitude more likely to be given a pacemaker compared to a 35-year-old. In fact, it's not even in the same ballpark when you actually compare the numbers. It's nowhere near the same. But Kenneth's body is internally 35 to 37 years old, according to him. And all of this is apparently due to God's tremendous favor and blessing and the power of the word of faith mindset. But if this is true, why does Kenneth's body need a pacemaker, something that virtually no 35-year-old in the entire world needs? And he specifically said that his body has the, quote, diet and exercise of a 35-year-old. In reality, an 85-year-old with a cardiovascular system requiring a pacemaker would not be able to come close to a healthy 35-year-old when it comes to exercise. Again, all of the facts here fly completely in the face of what Kenneth said. In fact, it's utterly contradicted. And all of that would be fine if it was being made up exclusively as an opinion of his, but remember, that's not what happened. If you recall, he specifically said that God promised him, quote, 30 would be his new 80, and he's starting over again. But if God actually spoke directly to Kenneth Copeland saying these things, why is none of it coming true? Why is it that all of the evidence doesn't fit with that statement? How could Kenneth be so wrong about something he apparently heard directly and audibly from God himself? Is God incapable of making his voice heard when he speaks to someone? That's certainly not what we see normatively in the scriptures. At this point, some examples would be in order. When God spoke audibly to Cain in Genesis 4, Cain heard him. When God spoke audibly to Noah in Genesis 6, Noah heard him too. When God spoke audibly to Abraham in Genesis 12, Abraham heard him as well. When God spoke audibly to Isaac in Genesis 26, Isaac heard him. When God spoke audibly to Jacob in Genesis 28, Jacob heard him. And these are just examples from the very first book of the Bible. We could also talk about Moses, Isaiah, Jonah, Ezekiel, Elijah, the rest of the major prophets, the rest of the minor prophets, Samuel, David, Solomon, and many, many more. We haven't even scratched the surface here. So this begs the question then, if God was perfectly capable of speaking to his servants throughout the entirety of scripture, why is it that Kenneth Copeland isn't being told true things by the Lord? And more than this, why is he being told something that seems to be patently false? These are all essential questions, and none of them have ever been convincingly answered by his ministry or by the man himself. This brings us to the next clip, one which demonstrates the ultimate spiritual outcome of this worldview. Watch this. And so I said, well, pacemaker, you belong to me now. That means you belong to God and you're in a Holy Ghost body and you're going to work right. Yes. Which meant that as the, and then I got on that treadmill and I would lay hands on this thing and bless it. You're mine. You're in my body and the Holy Ghost is in there with you. Amen. And my body's dedicated to Jesus. Amen. And go back to all those scriptures. And talking about the prosperity of God. So essentially, Copeland commands the pacemaker to work properly inside him by right of his authority. And what gives him the right to do this? Well, in his view, it's two things. First, there is the fact that the pacemaker is in his body along with the Holy Spirit. Second, there is the fact that, quote, my body is dedicated to Jesus. 
Let's analyze this biblically. It is true that all true Christians have the Holy Spirit in them, although whether or not Kenneth Copeland shares in this reality is a matter of serious debate. But in any case, the actual question is, does the fact that we have the Holy Spirit in us guarantee us authority over any and all bodily functions? There doesn't seem to be any compelling biblical evidence for this, at least none that is offered by Kenneth Copeland. According to Jesus in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit teaches us in the ways of Christ. We also know that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us as Christians. That's Romans 8, 26. We additionally know that the Holy Spirit renews us. That's Titus 3, 5. The Spirit fills us with joy and peace. That's Romans 15, 13. The Spirit keeps us from walking in the flesh that we might not gratify its sinful desires. That's Galatians 5, 16. The Spirit gives gifts for the edification of the church body. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and verse 11. That is all true and very biblical. In fact, we should rejoice heavily in these things all the time. But there doesn't seem to be any indication that part of the Spirit's ministry to the believer is ultimate spiritual authority over your pacemaker. This brings us to the second piece of evidence. Kenneth says that he can control the pacemaker, in a sense, spiritually, because, quote, his body belongs to Jesus. Let's look at a passage related to that topic. Romans 12.1 says, quote, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, end quote. So it seems that the most important thing we could do in light of the fact that our bodies belong to Christ is to offer them up for Christian holiness, service, fellowship, edification, worship, joy, praise, discernment, etc. But there is no obvious connection between our bodies being dedicated to Jesus and a guarantee that we can command our bodies to do whatever we want. And this brings me to another important issue. This statement is not only lacking in biblical support, it also lacks virtually any logical structure. Think about it. If Kenneth Copeland can command the pacemaker to work properly within him, why couldn't he simply command his heart to work properly in the first place? In so doing, he would have saved himself time, money, and a surgery by completely eliminating the need for a pacemaker. This would also lend credibility to his power and spiritual authority to control his body, and it would provide further validity regarding this word from the Lord he claims to have received, the one about him being 30 years old at age 80. But despite all of the assurances that Kenneth offered and all the words from the Lord he claims to have received, every level of this is either unproven or completely contradicted. The point here is this. Kenneth Copeland often says things like this, talking about how incredibly blessed and healthy and wealthy he is. And he uses this kind of thing as evidence for his word of faith theology. What we hope we've demonstrated in this video is that Kenneth's so-called evidence here is not compelling at all. Most importantly, his position doesn't seem to have any biblical support, and his participation in false prophecy is, at the very least, extremely dangerous. Avoid teachers like this, and seek out instead good, solid local churches with good biblical teaching. That is the way forward. I pray that this has been a blessing to you, and please know that this video isn't meant as a sinful attack, but rather as a biblical critique. And let's pray for Kenneth, that he would stop this false teaching by God's grace and turn to the truth of God's Word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Terry W. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. Your support keeps us independent and helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today, and until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.